The French painter Degas once said, Art is not what you see, it's what you make others see. And today, we're going to explore that with the artist uh, based here in uh, Austin, Texas, uh, Pat Chapman, who's going to share with us both her gift, her painting, but especially her mission. Pat, we are so blessed to have you here on the AE Squared stage. Welcome. <laughs> Great to have you. Glad to be here. Yeah, and pardon my voice. It's been I've been rather popular this week. So, so Pat, to get started, can you give us a little bit of a tour of your life, from where you came up, how you established or discovered your gift, and what brought you to today, where you've made all of these beautiful works that we're going to share with our viewers. Oh, uh, I guess it started probably when I was a teenager. Mm. I started just piddling around with art. I never taken a class, and so I feel like I'm that I've been given an artistic gift, but I've never been, I've never developed it. And uh, move forward into my 30s, I started doing oil portraits. So they were very precise, very, you know, perfect. Right. Uh, and then I kind of took a break for a while, and then I discovered a medium called collage, which is just using acrylics and using handmade papers, and that was just so different than what I'd done before. It was More very texture. freeing. Yeah, yeah, lots of texture, I love so, texture. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that, and then I started taking workshops and taking classes and learning more. And uh, then this last year, uh, with the encouragement of my husband, because he believes in my gift and I didn't, uh, but he encouraged me to sign up with an art coach uh, out of Taos. I've taken five workshops from her personally in Taos. So I signed up with her uh, and met with her on a weekly basis on Zoom. Mm -hmm. and. Um, just found this love and freedom and art that I've I've never felt before. And so, what did she teach you? What did what, what was the, if you mind? What was the breakthrough in these that's kind of opened your eyes and your technique and whatnot? She could see what my husband could see. She could see the gift that I had, and I was just your typical artist going, "Oh, I'm I'm not very good. <laughs> oh, I could never have a show. Oh, I'm just I'm just." Yeah, I'll just right. do that. I'll just keep piddling. Right. Uh, but he just said enough, and so I was like, okay. <laughs> so I signed up with this artist. Um, her name is Gwen. Right. And uh, we met once a week for an hour, and she had to break through that wall with me. She had to break through and just say, enough. You are gifted, and I, I'm not here to make you feel better. I'm here to teach you and to train you to be the artist that you're made to be. And, and that took a, probably a month or two. But then once I was sailing, it was um, it was just freedom. It was just so much freedom. So, was there a moment in that where was it her telling you that you just finally agreed, or was it you looked at the work you were that was under your brush at the time that you stepped back and there was that pivot, that aha moment that you went, you know, maybe there's something to what they're saying. I think the latter. I think I think that is what happened because it's. I would put a piece away thinking I'm not happy with this. I'd put it away and then I'd bring it out two weeks later and go, huh, that's pretty that's awesome. Not bad. And then I was doing a master class online with Gwen and with six other artists. And I'll never forget, there was this one artist that I just loved. He was a great and his work that he would show was so good. And so I put up, I think it was the piece that I called my park bench guy. Mm -hmm. And I put it up and his comment was, Pat, that's the bomb. And I went, what? So there's someone else other than my husband and Gwen who like my art. Right. And so it just started, it just started evolving from there. So, and then I think that was probably the pivotal point right there. I was like, okay, I got this. So things have kind of accelerated then in the last year for you as you've developed. They have. Fun. Yeah. So take us into your heart and into your head. Okay. And let's, let's look at you, we're going to share some video that we've shot in, of you in your studio, but when you step up to a blank canvas, take us what's in your head and in your heart on that blank canvas. Is there, is there something that, you're, that, you, that you want to communicate? How does that process start? My, my work is very personal, mm -hmm. but when you look at it, I think it can be very universal. And when I go um, literally up to a blank canvas, rather than a fear, it's just 
I don't know what I'm going to do today, but the word that comes to my heart this morning is um, expectancy. So I'm just going to take charcoal and I'm going to write expectancy across. You'll never see that word, but it'll start evoking, oh, the color that would work with that. And then the layers or the, the different palette that I may use. Uh, and then things will start just evolving because I work in layers. Mm -hmm. Each of my pieces are a minimum of three to eight layers of paint or paper or charcoal or pastel. So that starts with like a wash is the first layer or? It's sometimes it's just the charcoal and it's then I'll charcoal. wet the charcoal and then I'll seal it and then I'll put paint on top of that or I'll put paper on top of that. So it's just, it's, it's really just play. I'm just kind of playing around at the beginning, just getting a feel for where I want to go. And that word that I wrote, expectancy, may change right. on about the second layer. And um, maybe something I read or a feeling, an experience that I'm having will start to play out on the canvas. So is there a point where you, you start with a word and you're playing, and so you're riffing on this first, maybe second layer, but is there a point where if you start to get a vision of where you're going to go as opposed to just improvising I mean is this an improvisation to all the way to the end or is there somewhere along the way in the development of this work where you see where you're going to end this work at you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. um, I don't get too far into the work before I know where it's gonna go okay. uh, but it needs to be developed this one <clears throat> this one was um, the title of this is Scars and Tattoos. Um, I had, um, I got my first tattoo mm -hmm. like three years ago and, um, and it was a fun experience. I like what my tattoo says. I love my tattoo. You're definitely from Austin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it uh, and so this just spoke to me of, of tattoos, but also just the scars that we have in our lives mm -hmm. uh, that that can bring us to healing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not a dark painting to me. This is, it was just a, a lively textural painting that I really enjoyed doing, really enjoyed Is that it. you? No, I guess it could be. Some of them could be autobiographical, mm -hmm. but again, I feel like they're somewhat, somewhat universal. Um, I enjoy doing the head shape. I enjoy doing faces. I right. enjoy doing eyes. So, so let's talk about the eyes for a second, because the, the piece, many of the pieces that we're going to share at the end of this interview, make sure you pay attention towards the end. We're going to take you through an art show. You are, as best I can tell, very well known for this theme of a partially hidden, partially exposed face, but the dominant feature is a very focused eye. As for me, when I see your work of the eye, it is the, as why well, I chose the, the quote that I did, it is, I see into that heart, but I feel like it's doing the same back at me. Take me into that, because this is a theme in this series. What is that saying about you, and what is it, because I know these aren't you, but tell me a little bit about your life that is making that eye so dominant in your work. Great question. Um... The, my series Authenticity was born out of when I realized that I was not living an authentic life. Uh, I had um, just a beautiful moment about seven years ago where I was called away from a really unhealthy relationship with alcohol. And it was kind of masking who I was. And it was just a great place to hide. It was a really good place to hide. And so now I'm exposed. and. But you see one thing, um, but I feel differently. I feel kind of messy. I feel mm -hmm. kind of um, kind of raw. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean messy and raw in a bad way. So the other half of my paintings that don't have an eye, that are just kind of messy and lots of color, I see those as kind of beautiful. Because I think we all have scars. We all have um, not perfection, you know, mm -hmm. not just perfect beauty. Um, and so I was trying to show the dichotomy of what people see and what you really, really are like. And um, that messy is okay. That messy, messy is okay. okay. Yeah. So there is a little bit of you in these, even Probably though that's so. not you, there's a little path. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, Probably so.